plays a full four copies of the Tapu Lele deck, so I guess it's not all that uncommon for him to see a couple of them be prized because he's uh, he's definitely prepared for that situation to happen. Yeah, this is something that uh, Azul likes to talk about a lot, and he, this is the reason why he decided four was so important. And uh, we actually see that Jimmy scratched it out here for us in the the, the four <laughs> count, so he added this last one, and, and it might actually be pretty important when he looks. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, it really could be as uh, we see a Bridget on turn one here from Jimmy. Jimmy is starting things off here in this win and in matchup between Jimmy Pendarvis and Frank Diaz. Can't stress enough how important this match is for both both of these players as Frank is really looking to solidify himself as one of the best world championship competitors of all time and Jimmy is looking to make a big name for himself at the world championships. Absolutely. Uh, Jimmy has been doing fantastically uh, throughout the entire year and you see that he's got him all, himself all the way to this stage. On the other side, Frank Diaz, he had a win and in last year as well and unfortunately uh, uh, a, he had a judge ruling that went against him and, it, and he ended up losing that match. So he's definitely going to be looking for a reversal of fortune here. Yeah, I had the pleasure of actually watching Frank win his, uh, his round seven match in person and he just immediately looked up at me after he picked up his cards and said... Win and ends are uh, win and ends at worlds are very dangerous for me, <laughs> um, and uh, and yeah, of course it reminded me of that uh, unfortunate situation for him last year. Oh, very interesting. Over on Jimmy's side, he attached an energy to his EV, but did not use that energy evolution. Uh, it, I believe his Espeon might just be in his hands, uh, or doesn't want to search one out uh, of the deck right now. Yeah, that's an interesting situation. I think uh, I think maybe one was prized. Could possibly. Can't remember. Uh, on the other side, though, looking at what Frank is able to do, he's got a sky return set up for himself, but that does not do very much against Trubbish. He's going to need to find some cards, uh, perhaps with that Ultra Ball that he has in his hand, really start to get going here because Shaman's not going to cut it. We do see him discard a couple of cards here for that Ultra Ball. That Ultra Ball will allow him to find any Pokemon in his deck and put it in his hand. So, of course, the first obvious choice is something like a Tapu Lele, some sort of a set of Pokemon. Maybe find himself a, uh, a Bridget or something along those lines for himself. It's This is a really interesting match, but actually really a really fitting matchup to end our Swiss rounds as we have both uh, top-tier versions of Garbodor, at least uh, what people consider to be the two best Garbodor variants uh, coming into Worlds between the Drampa Garbodor here from uh, from Frank and obviously the Espeon Garbodor from Jimmy. It's kind of a little bit of a showdown. And I guess, fittingly enough, there's the uh, the Garbodor that has the... Uh, Golisopod now. Golisopod, yeah, yeah uh, from the Japanese contingent. Uh, and that's not featured on this particular stream, but we've definitely featured it throughout the weekend. Yep. Uh, Frank here, he's just going to get himself 30 damage dealt onto that Trubbish and pick that Shaman back up. Uh, unfortunately, this means that Frank has no energy in play, just a Drampa with a Floatstone. And Jimmy, he was holding on to that Espeon. We see the Espeon GX hitting the board here. And uh, really, he can just start to control the game however he pleases. He has options like an N in his hand. He has Tapu Lele if he wants to search for a different supporter. Looks like he's just going to try to find a Floatstone here uh, or potentially a double colorless energy if he has to. Just got to get that Trubbish out of the active and confuse this Drampa. How many float stones does he play? It seems like he plays the full four. It's anytime I look into his list, it's always a four of. Yeah. But um, it seems like he plays the full four, which actually just makes it very consistent and makes it very difficult for him not to find it. So I would be surprised if he doesn't find a float stone here. He gets a fresh hand of six, and, and uh, no. color me surprised because he does not have it in his hand, and he doesn't have the double color. Doesn't energy even either. find an energy. Yeah. So it looks like we're not going to be seeing an attack here from Jimmy Pendarvis. And he may be forced to just end his turn after, well, after contemplating for a half a second there. And now it's back on Frank, who um, who has got to be feeling very thankful for this kind of a situation, even though his setup is just obviously not exciting. Yeah, Frank likes to slow the game down, but he needs to be attaching energies at the same time. He wants to get energy acceleration on the board just one, one, one turn at a time. And uh, then he uses his Plumeria in order to get back into position. He'll take energies off of the bench while knocking out the active with energies. And really, he can just start to dominate a board from there. But hasn't been able to find anything like that just yet, hoping that Jimmy starts to stumble here so that uh, he can get ahead. All right. Frank is going through his, uh, through his options. He does decide to get a uh, Trubbish, shuffles his deck. Frank... Um, like you said, he's definitely trying to slow the game down here. 
it's it's Jimmy who's kind of gone out, come off to this super fast start and given Frank's board and the fact that he has no energy in play, there's no real way for his Garboder or his grandpa to start pressuring Jimmy. And at this point, uh, I, I really want to start keeping track of how much how many items are in both players' discard piles as we are keeping track of uh, Frank's, but we haven't been keeping track of Jimmy so uh, far. We are keeping track of Jimmy's. It's at zero. I guess that explains things. Yeah, he uh, he has inadvertently played fantastically in this matchup. <laughs> Just <laughs> never going to let trash lands do anything. Well, that's that's definitely true. Uh, as trash Lynch is currently sitting at a very very pitiful zero damage for Frank Diaz. <laughs> Triple Trubbish though, no. to to accompany that shaman. Yeah. You see a double colorless energy in Frank's hand, but and it right as I say that it comes down onto the Drampa. But it's just, I mean, what are you going to be doing? I mean, Dealing 20 damage to the... Uh, to the. I think he's got a big wheel. Big wheel. That, that's a much better plan, and he sure indeed does. Big wheels, which means that uh, it's, it's on Jimmy here to find an end. But before he even does that, we see a field blower. That's the first item in Jimmy's discard pile. And here's the second. Yep, and now uh, Jimmy's got that end. It looks like it should be two. Yep, there we go. Two items in the discard pile here for Jimmy. And uh, more importantly, right, the N is shuffling both players' hands back into the deck, and both players are going to be drawing six cards, which obviously is very important against the Drampa who just uh, big-wheeled. That's right. Uh, now, Frank, uh, because he lost that floatstone, this means that if Jimmy is able to confuse this Drampa, just with the sheer amount of uh, just how awkward confusion is and how many items Frank has played this game, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Trash Lance really starts to add up here, being that it's already at 120, and the fact that confusion is going to do 60, that math works out pretty perfectly against the Drampa GX. Oh, man. Things are just... Even though the prizes haven't really been exchanged or anything like that, things are really looking up here for Jimmy as this early game has gone definitely in his favor just based on the number of items in the discard pile for Frank. Uh, well, now uh, Jimmy's going to add to that collection a little bit, and he's up to four now. Ultra Ball discarding an Ultra Ball. Uh, but he does get himself a Trash Lanch Garboder. So that is uh, one positive note there. It looks like, once again, he's not going to be able to get his... Uh, Pokemon out of the active spot, so he's just gonna start to go in with his Garboder here. Trash Lance should be doing 120 damage, and uh, that's a nice chunk of change against the Drampa. Would you have rather seen a Siphon here or or that uh, Trash Lance? Well, he would. Uh, he has no way to retreat, so he would. Well, I, I guess what I meant was like, would you have preferred to see a Siphon had he had the way? Oh yes, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure that he would have liked to as well. If the Floatstone was there, putting the confusion onto the Drampa would have been very nice. Okay, I definitely agree there. And now Frank has a hand of seven cards, six from the end from Jimmy, and one from his turn, uh, the start of his turn. We see him fan uh, Tapu Lele to the front of his hand. Has a double colorless energy and a couple of other psychic energies to go with it. Yeah, this Tapu Lele comes down, Wonder Tag, finding any uh, supporter card in Frank's stack. And it looks like he's going to be going for a Guzma. Yeah, if Frank had a... Garbodor in his hand. He would have had more options available to him. Maybe could have grabbed that Plumeria, uh, taken the energy off of the Espeon GX, and then also knocked out the uh, active Garbodor, uh, leaving Jimmy with nothing that, but two cards in his hand, which seems pretty favorable. But since he doesn't have that, he has to take different routes here. Looks like Frank is retreating, uh, promoting the uh, Trubbish. Here's one way to take away an energy. Well, I guess so. And he does not take away the energy, unfortunately for him, but he does deal quite a bit of damage here as 80 damage gets uh, pegged onto that uh, Espeon GX. Yeah, Choice Band really starts to add up when you involve weakness as well there. Uh, it's a nice play by Frank being able to start to soften up this Espeon while he still doesn't have very much going on on his side of the board. And now an end here from Jimmy. He really did not like that hand. So both players shuffle back in. Both players draw six. Yep, now uh, for, for Jimmy, he's left in a, a weird spot too here. Uh, he has uh, it, like no floatstone option to him. Uh, he doesn't really want to commit any more to his Espeon, and he's already used his supporter for the turn. So uh, does he want to just confuse a Trubbish? <laughs> I, you might have to. Uh, but uh, now he's, uh, he's going to retreat here and just uh, take a knockout on it. 
uh, with his Garboder. Okay, he does uh, go for that Garboder play instead. Trash Lange dealing enough damage to that Trubbish to knock it out a couple of times. And uh, Trubbish does hit the discard pile. But now there's a Garboder ready to, well, a uh, uh, potential Garboder from Frank that could knock the, the opposing Garboder right back out. It just depends on whether he's willing to spend that Ultra Ball as a resource. And it seems like he he believes he should. At this point in time, you already have six uh, six items in your discard pile, so it's a little bit easier for you to, to discard another one. But you definitely want to stop uh, stop your opponent from being able to one-hit KO your uh, your Tapu Leles, for example. Right. So it's it's a tough it's a tough situation, but it seems like at this point he's crossed the point of no return, and Frank Diaz is just kind of going to throw a caution to the wind here and uh, discard at will and uh, just kind of set up his potential attackers from here on out. Yeah, he, this is what he has to do. He's taking a, a he's in a prize disadvantage. His board state is not nearly as good as uh, Jimmy's right now. The only thing that he does have an advantage in is potentially energies, but Frank just has to keep the ball rolling here. He's going to have to get more Garboder out, and maybe this end is going to be the piece that helps him out here. He Maybe, but... Oh, okay, that explains a lot. He has the Garboder already in hand. I was going to say, if he needs to hit a Garboder still off of that end, that wouldn't make too much sense. But having the Garboder already in hand makes a lot more sense. Yeah, and uh, down comes the end. Frank able to play out his entire hand and find himself six fresh cards. It's uh, definitely beneficial. Now... Jimmy Pendarvis just needs to get a constant stream of attackers going. Uh, he will be losing the only energy he has on the field. So this uh, this uh, N is going to have to find Jimmy some some energies. But he does have five cards that he gets to draw off of this N. So it's not like it's very difficult for him to do so. Yeah, Jimmy found a double colorless energy. He's looking for psychic energy so that he can continue the, the trash lanches that he has going on. He lies like a hawk. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, Tapu Lele, wonder tagging. And uh, this is where that teammates is going to be so great. Uh, there was a little debate between the testing group if this was going to be a card worth uh, putting into the deck. And they decided that this was very good for uh, Garboder decks. When you're playing this matchup uh, or if you're playing the mirror matchup, you really want to have that answer for when you get into this war of Garboders, when you're trash launching back and forth. You want to make sure that you're able to stay in this. The teammates, well, well, I guess uh, even though we just kind of potentially got spoiled there, what cards would you have gone for for the teammates? Well, uh, it, it's easy to say that Rescue Energy, uh, Rescue Stretcher would be a, a great play here. He can either grab himself another Garboder out of the discard pile or shuffle in um, some of the pieces if he so chooses. And it looks like he is just going to make sure he has another attacker. And, of course, you need that Psychic Energy if you want to Trash Lanch. So Jimmy making the right read here, getting his Pokemon ready to continue to go in this back and forth and then he's just going to be looking to land uh, some easy knockouts on some damaged Pokemon like that Drampa. It looks like we have more items in the discard pile. Yep, sure enough, Judge is on top of it. And we are up to five items now, which is enough for a knockout onto the, uh, well, not enough uh, for a knockout onto the Garboder. So he needs one more. So he's going to need an alternate route when it comes to attacking here or potentially a uh, Guzma. Looks like he's got a Versus Seeker in his hand. I think he's got a Guzma in the discard pile already. Well, if he has, if he does get Trash Lanch, he does get to play into the weakness of Garboder. So that would be good for him. But he's doesn't look like he has that just yet. He's actually just going to have to end and try to find it himself. Let's see. Well, right, but... Doesn't he only deal 100? Oh, wait, no, duh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> There's that little purple times two, my friend. <laughs> For some reason, I, in my own head, this is how long a day it's been. In my own head, I was like, yeah, but that's still only 100. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's been a long day. It's all right. That's why we're here. That's why we're here, to have a long day. Uh, they, give, they give you a buddy to help out. <laughs> oh, I agree with that. They gave me the best buddy. <laughs> Swabel House. All right. Um, at this point, it's a, it's a ton of items in the discard pile for Frank. That's the easiest way for us to keep track of that. 
something that I should have mentioned. Well, let's see if this flip goes out. It does not go Frank's way here. But uh, something worth mentioning, Frank, I believe, does play a 2-2 split of the Garboders. So he's not built for this kind of exchange. And uh, yeah, he just scoops up the cards. He drew into the wrong Garboder. He drew into the, uh, the Garbotoxin Garboder. And that's not going to do him anything right now. So he's just going to give himself the, some time and give himself the best opportunity to potentially win the next two games here with about 35 minutes. Yeah, that 2-2 two -two split of Garboder really makes him rely on finding cards like Rescue Strategy. If he doesn't find that kind of a card, then he's just not going to have a lot of attackers for this mirror matchup. Or, well, when I call it a mirror matchup, I'm basically yeah. saying the Garboder uh, versus Garboder matchup. Yeah, it means that Frank might have to go with alternate routes of just focusing on Drampa as his main attacker and starting to target down Tapu Lele's and uh, anything else that he can knock out. Maybe if he can start to chip into an Espeon, he can take that out as a knockout. Focus on three GX knockouts and try to win the game that way because he has a difficult uh, time keeping up with what Jimmy was able to do there. Yeah, I think a lot of this uh, game had to do with the fact that Frank started off with that Shaman. Yeah, it was, he was bad. Yeah, he was forced to uh, to Sky Return on the first turn, which left him with no energy in play. And that's just really, really important when your opponent is putting that kind of pressure on you. Remember, not only did he have to Sky Return, but he also had to Sycamore away a couple of item cards. He, he had a lot of things go his opponent's way in that early game, and that kind of forced him into a, uh, a prize exchange that he just wasn't prepared for. So Jimmy Pendarvis takes game one here, and Jimmy is actually one game away from becoming a top eight competitor uh, at the World Championship. So very, very big game here for him. Yep, got to keep the nerves in check, make sure that that, uh, that basic Pokemon he put down was what he needed there. And uh, time for the prize cards over on Jimmy's side. Let's see if game two is going to be as kind to him as game one was. And it looks like that's not terrible to Professor Sycamore the in the discard here. pile, but the Bridget. Yeah, that's right. That will be... Uh, that could be pretty impactful. Yeah, you never really want to see that bridge in your uh, your prizes, but uh, in certain situations, you just flat out don't need it. So, right, that could definitely ha be the case in this in this game. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, we'll also have to wait and see if Frank finds a Pokemon. It looks like he finds a find a Drampa. Yep. And uh, Frank's Let's just see if uh, Frank's prizes are gives us all the prizes. <laughs> all right. So, Shaman, Double Colorless, Kuzma. Uh, these are fine prizes. Yep. Uh, uh, we, I definitely expect to see a much closer game, uh, game two here. And Frank going first is also very important for him as if he has an Ultra Ball here. So he can definitely start setting up some basic Pokemon. But instead he actually has the Tapu Lele already. So he didn't even need to Ultra Ball here. Potentially seeing a Bridget here from Frank. Yeah, I'm not even sure if that's the right play here, honestly. He needs to have an energy card uh, to really make this worthwhile. Uh, we might just see him using the Tapu Lele, uh, finding another supporter that he doesn't really want, uh, and then using an N, uh, because he needs to get energies onto the board. We saw how that messed him up last game. And uh, using that Ultra Ball for uh, Trubbish, for example. Yeah. Okay, I can see that. Uh, he might also just... Oh, maybe not even use the Ultra Ball and not play down too many items. What if he Bridget's, Bridget uses the Ultra Ball for Shaman and then finds an energy? How, how great would that be? Isn't it uh, isn't Frank Shaman prize? Uh, I did not see if that was true. There was one Shaman prize. I can't remember if it was from Frank or for... I, I, he might be it. I think he's the only one well, who plays yeah, the a Shaman. Well, he's the only one playing Shaman, so it, it is prize for, for Frank. Oh, Frank is going to find himself a Trubbish. All right, it looks like we see at least one item hit the discard pile for Frank already. If he can keep that number of items low, say up to three-ish, then uh, he'll still be fine. But the moment that you enter, you know, that four-plus range, that's when things start to get a little bit tricky. Well, Tre tricky. Three is actually the scary number because 60 to 120 is the knockout sure. in the in the Garbos. But, yeah, it, 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 you really do want to watch how well, it many. Looks like he's going to sick him more here, so it, it, it may be already at, the, at that number three. Yep, and then it just might just be his, his strategy here, just... Go aggressive, use your Drampas, and uh, you know that you're not going to win the Garbo. Did he have access to N? He did, right? Yeah, he uh, I, he discarded it with the Sycamore. Okay, we'll have to see. Um, and we actually don't know how many items are in the discard pile yet, so. Yeah, well, Jimmy's side now. Uh, having an EV is nice. Having energy evolution there available to you is great, too. You get to grab your Espeon, but 
you really don't like the fact that you're going to confuse a Pokemon with a Floatstone on it. So if Jimmy was able to find a card like Field Blower, uh, he'd feel a, like this was a lot more impactful for him. Now an Ultra Ball from Jimmy, discarding only an Ultra Ball as the relevant item. Yeah, this is where he's going to look for likely a Tapu Lele for a Bridget, but he's going to get the bad news that his Bridget is prized, so might have to go with an alternate route. Well, he finds the Tapu Lele before he even looks for the Bridget. Always got to find a supporter. Actually, uh, looking at Guzma, he wants to confuse uh, this Drampa, I believe. He's got a Floatstone for his Tapu Lele, so although it is promoted, he can just bring it right back, and he can start to apply some pressure to Frank here, confusing the Drampa with the energy, and the Floatstone's on the wrong Drampa now. Yeah, that's uh, very important. Um, a Guzma can bail Frank out as well as a couple of other cards, but you're absolutely right. Now, it looks like they're getting a count of the uh, number of items. We finally get the spoiler that it was only one item. So much... A lot of supporters. Much stronger, yeah, much stronger uh, start here for Frank. As both players only have a single item in their discard pile. Frank Garboder. does have a Garboder available to him this game. Second item. And he just wants to get rid of all of this. He is up to two items in the discard pile, so one more is going to be pretty dangerous for him. Is luckily able to find that Floatstone, though, that's going to sneak his Drampa out of the active spot if he so chooses. I and don't see it. Do you? Uh, Maybe it's the last card? Yeah, he moved it over. I believe that this turn could be pretty great for him. Oh, it Maybe is the last card in his hand. He could use this Floatstone and move to the other Drampa attached to it. And if he wants to use Big Wheel, that's available to him. If he wants to put a little chip damage into the Espeon to work into that 180 damage range later, that's available to him too. also. Lots of options here. Um, uh, or this. <laughs> it's not an option I was considering myself, but it, it also makes sense. Yeah. Uh, you hit your opponent for it, weakness. It's 100 damage, and it, although... You don't think about Trash Lanch when there's only one item in the discard. Frank says, I'm not going to win a Trash Lanch uh, fight, so I might as well use it while I can. And I like that play a lot a lot more than I like Big Wheel, too. Your hand is actually fine, so you don't really necessarily need the Big Wheel, you know? Yeah. So you might as well put pressure on your opponent, force Jimmy to make the move himself. And it's not like your opponent can just kind of uh, Trash Lanch you back. Three. Yeah, this may line up awkwardly for Frank if... Jimmy just does decide to uh, confuse the Garbodor right off the bat. Uh, then he's left stuck, stranded uh, with his Garbodor. He, he's already had two Floatstones down, and he has a Choice Band on his Garbodor. So he'd have to find some switching options for himself, too. Right. He'd have to probably Guzma into the top of Lele, which, I mean, would obviously slow him down. But still, the damage has been done to that Espeon. Or you flip for it. That is ab actually really true. Uh, that's something that people don't really consider very often. Yeah, we saw Tordy. Yeah, he was able to flip a few heads for himself. It happens. Sometimes you just have to, you know, uh, just do it. Jimmy's going to eye up uh, any possible options for himself here. Has a double colorless energy in his hand. So uh, if he wants to get aggressive, he, of course, can attach that to his Espeon and take a knockout on this Garboder. But doesn't think that that's going to be the best play for himself. Uh, just going to play that energy onto the top of Lele and use N here. All right, second item for uh, for Jimmy. One item away from that crucial three, that, uh, number three that you were talking about. Uh, it looks like Frank's already hit that number. Yeah, and I mean, uh, that means that if there were to be uh, trash lances back and forth, uh, Jimmy is in a pretty good spot. Uh, that is something that Jimmy would like to do during this game. It worked fantastically for him in the opening game, but I don't know if Frank's going to play that anymore. He just wants to use Drampas. Who will be able to join the ranks of Raiji, Pablo, Naoto, and uh, Diego here? Will it be Frank Diaz or will it be Jimmy Pendarvis? Jimmy up one game to nothing against Frank with 25 minutes remaining, but, I mean, it's still it's still anybody's uh, ball game here as uh, Frank is definitely putting up... Uh, a huge fight against Jimmy in the second game. Yeah, awkward spot here for Frank. Yeah, he does have the option to use the Ultra Ball for a Tapu Lele. He could find himself a Guzma and get himself out of the active spot, but I don't know if that does much for him. So he, he's actually just going to play down a Trubbish into that fifth spot on his bench, filling up his bench here and 
we might be seeing him flip for it. I mean, you might as well. The 30 damage isn't going to be too impactful, and you're just going to get knocked out next turn. Oh, he's going for it. He's like, which dice should I choose? <laughs> he's going for it. This is a big-time trash lance. Will he hit it? Yes. Big hit here for, for Frank. And you see him fist pump. You know that that was a very important flip for him. He knew that potentially his tournament was on the line with that flip. And sure enough, the uh, the flip came up heads at the most opportune moment for Frank Diaz as he is now up four prizes to six against Jimmy Pendarvis in what might have been the most important, important flip of this tournament so far. Absolutely. That, that was the difference of 100 damage, a knockout. Uh, this Tapu Lele being promoted means that it's now vulnerable to an attack that may not have even happened. So crazy how just that one die is really going to affect this game here. Now, Jimmy Pendarvis has to not let this phase him too much. He did get unlucky here in this situation. He did what he could to prevent this from happening, but Frank did not, uh, did not back down. He did not show weakness. He decided to go for this, uh, for this big play that could, could have uh, just either spelled the end for his tournament or, um, or could have spelled the end for Jimmy Pendarvis in the second game. And in this particular case, it went Frank's way, but Jimmy has to maintain composure here as he seems to be doing so, as we see, uh, take a look into Jimmy's uh, concentration. And now it's on Jimmy to kind of make sure that this doesn't get out of hand. Uh -oh. His opponent has a much stronger field than him, but that's not the end all be all here. Uh, Jimmy's hand is pretty terrible. Yeah, he, he drew into a few energies. Uh, he's got a float stone. A rescue stretcher, but no Tapu Lele in there. So yeah, he needs to find some help out of his prize cards. All right. So now Jimmy Pendarvis Looks does like knock out the Frank's Bridget. Pokemon, though. Frank's Trash, uh, trash Lantern Garboder is down. And remember, Frank does play a very interesting uh, number of Garboders here. So losing a single one is very important. Yeah, the 2-2 split means that Rescue Stretcher is just all that important. It, you might not be able to get to pick and choose. You might have to shuffle in multiple Garboder at the same time in order to get full effect out of that. But uh, fantastic Guzma here for Frank. Not only is he able to start to attach some energies to these Drampas that he's going to focus on, but he can remove a Trubbish that would be a potential Garboder for Jimmy now. And Jimmy's going to be just left with this Tapu Lele, which can't really uh, attack cleanly into this Garboder. Another big play here for Frank is uh, Trubbish hits the discard pile here for Jimmy. And Jimmy is, while he is only down a couple of prizes, he's, I mean, just look at the board difference. Look at just how much Frank has built up. He hasn't even used his Drampas yet in this game. And both of them have an energy attached to them already. So a double colorless way for each of these Drampas, as well as this Garboder, which uh, for, Jimmy's going to have a, a really hard time uh, keeping up with. Even though he only has three items in his discard pile, that's still 60 damage onto a non-psychic uh, weak Pokemon. And if you lay down a Trubbish, it's in danger of it getting Guzman right up. Yeah, all of these Trubbish are going to be in danger. He can't play Eevees anymore. He doesn't want to ever get out that Espeon GX. That's a huge liability so late in the game. And this is where you start to see how the matchup shifts. If he's playing Drampa, then he does have this option available to him. Now, basically, the whole Eevee line doesn't do very much. You see, he has to play the, uh... <laughs> man, really been a long day. Bridget. He has to play the Bridget and just finds three basic Pokemon. And that's kind of the end of his turn. He's just, all he can really do is uh, energy drive for 60 damage. Not not ideal against a, a deck that's already a couple of prizes ahead of you. Yeah, this is not a spot that Jimmy wants to be in. And this is where you start to think about time. Uh, he's He knows he has a... a, a at least maybe 20 25 minutes uh to win another game and this one is really isn't going his way if potentially if frank had like seven items in the discard pile you can start thinking about ways to come back uh, but this just isn't going how he wants it to field blower gets rid of that floatstone on jimmy's uh jimmy's side of the field so that's now four items in the discard pile here for jimmy yeah that's six also for frank so uh, it actually is starting to uh, go in his favor but if frank is going to do this this means that he probably has a pretty big play lined up for him and it is going to be that shame and drawing a lot of cards it looks like it draws him five or six cards here and he is up to a six card hand that's a lot of energies in his hand but none of them are double colorless he does have guzma in his hand which means he can target down that trubbish with the psychic energy if he wants to uh he also 
maybe has a Plumeria in his discard pile. There's a, a plenty of options for him, but yeah, he's going to target down that Trubbish and try to clear that off the board. Now, the problem with this is he uh, he does not have the double color synergy to attack with the Drampa GX. Yeah, he's going to retreat. Yeah, which means he's going to have to attack with the uh, with the Garboder, and that's his final Garboder. That's his final Trash Lynch and Garboder. He's going to have to find that Rescue Stretcher. Yeah, uh, it's definitely a card that we're going to have to look out for. Uh, he might also just be trying to eye down those last two prizes on the Tapu Lele. Uh, he has a Drampa with a Choice Band and two energies already, so just the Psychic might be enough if he's able to hold on to that via Seeker. Jimmy just mulling over what's in his discard pile here for himself, and uh, it looks like he might have to just hope that there's no more Garboder either. He's going to uh, think about Espeon here. Yeah, I could definitely see that Espeon being the card that he goes after here. Um, though, he may he also have some Tapu Lele Guzma plays lined up too. There's, it, It's hard to tell here. A lot of options for himself. Uh, yeah, he's going to eye up an N, and it makes the, the EV promotion a little suspect. It does. Oh, but well, less Plumstone suspect when you makes have a it a lot better. <laughs> yeah. Now, he has a choice band that he can still attach before he decides to uh to end as well as a couple of well a double colorless energy yeah and uh, this is a big risk for jimmy he knows that he has to make plays like this if he's going to stay in the game but really just one energy well, is going to be yeah, enough for frank one energy away from frank winning this game and taking it to game three I wouldn't be surprised for frank to just kind of show him that uh, energy if he does draw it just to speed things up here as a draw would be terrible for these players. Yeah, even the uh, Frank having access to his big wheel if he needs to, uh, he's not in danger of prize cards affecting him when Jimmy has five left. So he's got plenty of turns to get himself into this spot that he needs cards to be. For Frank. Is one of them an energy? It looked like a double colorless. It did to me too. Jimmy is going to find himself that uh, trash Lanch Garboder. Uh, is it a double colorless? We'll see. Okay, so... Yeah, let's see if my Hawkeyes were right or not. Oh, it yeah. is. <laughs> versus Seeker. Well, he doesn't even need the Versus Seeker, honestly. Yeah, well, he can Guzma, uh, bring up the other Tapu Lele, and uh, knock that thing right out. And sure enough, Frank Diaz takes game two here as both players are now tied at one game apiece with about 15 minutes remaining, give or take. Um, so not a ton of time left for this third game, but... It is down to the wire, and a draw would el potentially eliminate both of these players from the top eight uh, competition. So you have to believe that they're both going to be playing at lightning fast speeds, trying to get this uh, third game wrapped up before uh, the end of time. But, man, what a, what a series so far. Yeah, this is what we live for. This is the reason why we're at the World Championships. Uh, both these players trying to get those last three match points in order to lock up top eight contention and keep their hopes alive of being the world champion. Jimmy Pendarvis with a win. Frank Diaz with one win as well. Both trying to get that very crucial last win here. And both players are going to be playing pretty quickly now uh, with time being so low. And that's exactly what we want to see. We want to see both these players really working for it, trying to earn that top eight spot yeah with jimmy uh, losing the the second game here he will have the opportunity to go first in this third which is a, a relative advantage um definitely nothing that's uh well it's definitely an advantage that that matters and we'll have to see if he can take advantage of this uh situation as setting up multiple pokemon and attaching an energy on this first turn will be critical for him and will solidify him in uh in the lead here in this uh, third and final game and now frank d is looking at his hand Jimmy Pendarvis looking at his hand. Looks like uh, Jimmy, I think, is mulliganing, and Frank is not. Yeah, Jimmy found two espions. That hand would have not been very good for him, so uh, definitely wants to get rid of that. Let's go yeah. over and see what Frank's got in his prize card Frank's for us. prizes show us a top of Lele and a couple of Versus Seekers, but I'm okay with this. Um, it, it, the Versus Seekers definitely can hurt, especially given the fact that one Versus Seeker is at the very, very top. But, um, you know, you... You take this, I think. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy, on the other hand, his hand, he started with Tapu Lele. A lot of item cards. Uh, so let's see if his Trubbish. prizes mess with him. No. Uh, Jimmy's prizes are actually really nice for him. Yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, unfortunately, though, it does draw into another item card. And it's not going to help him out. He Is can he play a lot of this, though. 
He's going to Ultra Ball, but is he going to have to Sycamore as well unless he decides to find a Tapu Lele? So it looks like the uh, the Ultra Ball is getting rid of one more item, so that's two items already in the discard pile. Yeah, this should be... Uh, he. Yeah, he doesn't want to... Oh, well, he's <laughs> he's going to Ultra Ball for the Tapu Lele, which that is going to find him the end. I yeah. let him um, do it. Ultra Ball, not that strong on its own. But it does get you there. And uh, now... He's going to attach a choice band, potentially attach a double colorless before he ends, but chooses not to. Decides that he wants to uh, save his energy attachments for his normal attackers, which are Espeon and, uh, and Garboder. So we see the game plan here from Jimmy. Will it pay off? Yeah, this is an interesting route. He, he had the option to go for Bridget. He had an energy in his hand as well, and he right. had a VS Seeker, which meant that he could go for uh, the Sycamore that he placed in his discard pile, but all of that meant that he probably played a little too many items and he felt comfortable playing. Yeah. So he, he went with this route instead, hoping to find some basic Pokemon, but I don't see any. <laughs> Maybe that Tapu Lele, but yeah, he doesn't want to add a third. So... Tapu Lele gets a Psychic Energy attached to it instead of the double close that he had in the original hand. But that's just because Jimmy's hand did not really cooperate with him after he uh, he drew for that end. And now it's on Frank to see if he can take advantage. He has a couple of Trubbish in his, uh, in his bench already with a Trampa in the active position. So this is a great start for Frank before he even got to draw his card. But now that he does, we'll have to see if he can keep that up. Um, Seeing your opponent with only a Tapu Lele with the energy is very important for you and very nice if you are uh, Frank or a Frank oh. Diaz fan. And an end here from Frank. That bailed Jimmy out so much. Yeah, His really hand did. was going nowhere fast. It really, really did. But there's no real way for Frank to know that outside of the uh, energy attachment onto the Lele. Right. Yeah, It's. Uh, I mean, when you see your opponent play nothing else but his energy, probably means they have something in their hand that they just weren't allowed to play, like supporter cards. But in that case, he just didn't have it. Uh, Frank now looking over his new hand. Uh, looks like he's found some of his tech supporter cards and an Ultra Ball. So he would have to play some items in order to continue to draw cards in the coming turns. I think at this point you probably just... I might even big wheel, honestly. But he's uh, deciding to put the pedal to the metal, dealing 50 damage to this Tapu Lele, taking advantage of his choice band. Um, the reason I would have considered big wheeling is because you're going to have to Ultra Ball anyways for the Tapu Lele on the following turn. Right. So you might as well just kind of spend this turn. I don't think that 50 damage is going to be all that relevant onto this, uh, your opponent's active Tapu Lele with no energy on it. But we'll have to wait and see as Jimmy Pendarvis now continues his own turn, attaches a double colorless energy and a choice band onto the active Lele. So what do I know? And now... Uh, Benches a third Tapu Lele. Yeah, we'll see what he's eyeing up. It looks like he's going to eye the end, too. So Big Wheel would have been punished. He wanted to use this end here regardless. Uh, both players now kind of in a weird spot. Jimmy's going to put on some aggression with Tapu Lele and get 90 damage onto the Drampa. And Frank's in a spot where he doesn't really want to commit anymore to this Drampa but attacking removes the double colorless energy. So uh, they're both going to use these uh, attacks that aren't doing too much, but keeping each other in the game. Could have said that better myself. Jimmy Pendarvis now looking at his new hand. His new hand at least includes a Garbodor and a Trubbish, so it's got some Pokemon, but it doesn't have energies. Frank might be lined up for his patented play of uh, Ultra Ball for Shaman Plumeria, get rid of an energy and uh, Shaman for six. It's never a bad play. Uh, yeah, we do see 90 damage come down over from Jimmy Pendarvis' side. Okay. I was going to look at those uh, as, at those dice and say there's no way nine, uh, nine items are in Jimmy Pendarvis' discard pile, but yeah. luckily we <laughs> fixed that. Yeah, Frank's going to uh, look over his options here. Ultra Ball here gets rid of a uh, one item here from from Frank. Yep. Frank's just going to take a look at his hand, see what his best option is. Mine says Shaman. I think I called it. Yeah, I think <laughs> you did too. Now, the problem is, though. This does play items. Yeah, the play. I mean, it plays some items, but I think, well, I mean, it's still important to get rid of the double color center, or get rid of the, uh, the energies from your opponent's field. Uh, obviously, you can righteous edge away the double colorless and maybe get rid of the psychic on the on the top of Lele, there's a couple of plays you can make, but is it strong? Yep. 
Oh, Frank does want to get those Trubbish down, so he's going to hold the Plumeria for after the Shaman here. Gets himself five fresh cards and uh, can look at what the best option is to discard here. Maybe he doesn't have to discard some item cards that he doesn't want in his discard pile. Sure, and he may actually not even want to go for the Plumeria after all. Uh, he does have a Field Blower, which increases both players' discard piles worth of item cards as now there's four for Jimmy and two for Frank. But... If he found a different supporter, he could very well play, a, say, an N or a different supporter card here. But the Plumeria is definitely a potential choice. And sure enough, he goes for the Plumeria, gets rid of that Psychic Energy on Zapulele. And uh, one more item in the discard pile for Frank. That's up to three. Yep, and uh, with <laughs> under 10 minutes on the clock, Jimmy is run out of energies in the opening turns. Uh, Frank over here has two energies down, working on some Garboders, and it's really up to Jimmy now. He's got to find some answers. He lost his choice band, so a double colorless energy has to also have a choice band in order to combat this Drampa. Uh, it's also a lot to add to a Tapulele that already has 100 damage on it. So a uh, big turn here for Jimmy. He's going to have to turn the tides here. Yeah, the advantage is squarely in uh, Frank's favor here as Ultra Ball here from Jimmy is going to bring the fifth uh, item into the discard pile here for, for Jimmy. I think Jimmy's going to have to look out uh, for Tapu Lele number four, honestly. Uh, his hand uh, just, it, it ran dry, so uh, being uh, having this fourth Tapu Lele, we're going to see come in handy again for him. The fourth Tapu Lele here for Jimmy. It's a Tapu Lele deck. Yeah. <laughs> Finds him a Sycamore. Jimmy's at the point of no return at this point. He has no Eevees whatsoever in play. Just struggle to find them. Yep, I do believe he has a Floatstone in his hand. He can attach that to the active and then just dump the rest of his hand if he wants to. He can also attach to this Trubbish uh, if he finds a Garbo, uh, if he finds a trash Lanch and a uh, Choice Band, he would have a knockout that way as well. Frank looking at Jimmy's discard pile. Um, yeah, he does have a couple of options still available to him. I'm not sure how strong his hand is. I see a Garboder at least. Yeah, I don't think he hit it. He also had the option if he hit a Field Blower, that would have been enough to get the damage perfectly for himself there, but wasn't able to find it. Ran into some kind of awkward cards for himself. No Choice Band either, right? Uh, yeah, not that I saw. Uh, he has a three Psychic Energy, a Parallel City Gym, Rescue Stretcher. Well, the Parallel City could be pretty nice for him. Gets rid of that. Uh, damage on the top of Lele. Yeah, uh, that, that could be very beneficial for him if he wants to remove that. He might wait to do it uh, in a later turn. Maybe. Seems like he will. Okay. And just steal 60 damage to Drampa. Just not enough to knock it out. This is so important. He was... I mean, he was just a, a choice band away from knocking it out, basically. Yeah. And, and this is a weird spot for Jimmy. He doesn't want to... He has a hard time finding a way to do 30 damage from this point on uh, without bringing in a Garboder to get knocked out immediately by Frank's Garboder or attaching another double colorless energy to a Tapu Lele and continuing that again. Uh, he doesn't have cards like Shaman in order to use that Sky Return, bring it back up in your hand and be protected uh, like Frank has that option. Looks like Frank had a Versa Seeker, I believe. Uh, and if he did, then he now has four items in his discard pile. But um, Frank is uh, in the driver's seat here still. Looks like he's going to add to that pile, too. He's got the Ultra Ball in his hand. Uh, could be getting rid of the Garbotoxin Garboder if he wants to. Uh, he Looks does like have a Floatstone on a Trubbish, though. So if he wants to lock in Garbotoxin, that is available to him as well. But you've already seen your opponent play for Tapu Lele. What abilities are they going to use? Looks like Frank's passed the opponent point no return himself. Good old big wheel. All right. A simple big wheel for the turn. Well. I mean, Jimmy's hand doesn't beat big wheel right now. <laughs> he has no supporter in his hand. Uh, he's kind of just stuck taking these free prizes that Frank is happy to give him and uh, we're going to see if he has the cards to stay in a, a Garbodor uh, trash Lanch fight. That turn could have definitely gone worse for Jimmy, though. Uh, I think as far as turns go, obviously, giving your hand, you definitely don't want to be seeing your opponent Big Wheel. But, I mean, losing your one Garbodor would have been potentially even worse. 
Yeah, it's it's tough. It's it's just not a spot an enviable spot here for Jimmy as it seems like he can do no right in this match in this uh, third game. Nothing really going his way. Uh, has to have all four Tapu Leles in play. No Espions in sight. Um, but he does have a couple of Garboder. That's the that's the bright side of things. Yeah, he's going to need to find something useful from these two prize cards that he's going to get here off of this Drampa GX. He has cards like Rescue Stretcher in his hand, so that means he can bring Garboders back onto the field if he wants to in the later stages. But it's going to be pretty difficult to orchestrate all of this when you don't have Tapu Leles. And, and there's that parallel city. Yeah, we're going to see Jimmy put these Tapu Leles into the discard pile, which also means that they're available to shuffle back into the deck if he wants to with Rescue Stretcher, or just to have that option of using Rescue Stretcher, grabbing a Lele, which means any supporter you need. And down goes Drampa as uh, Jimmy Pendarvis takes a four to six prize lead in this third game, but with four minutes remaining, now is when Frank's got to start putting the the pedal to the metal here and really start taking some prizes against Jimmy. Remember, four minutes is not a very long time, and that that really only secures a couple of turns for each of these players, if that. Yep, well, Frank does have a lot of cards here available to him. It just, what are the best options for him? He has Plumeria in his hand that he's eyeing up. He can remove the Psychic Energy on the benched Garboder and knock out the active Garboder as well. Uh, I believe Jimmy does have more psychic energy in his hand, though. So All I know is he really has to speed things up. Yeah, really, right. really, really badly. Three minutes and 40 seconds remaining now. Remember, a draw for both of these players would potentially eliminate both of them. Um, more than likely would, actually. And uh, Frank here just wants to avoid that from happening, especially because it seems like he's in the lead here. If you get to get rid of that energy on the benched uh, Garboder like he did and knock out the active Garboder, you could potentially lock your opponent out of the game. You know that your opponent's been struggling to draw uh, pretty much throughout the last couple of turns. And with your kind of a setup, you can really take over this game as long as Jimmy does not top deck out of it. And just as I say that, he finds a uh, Sycamore off the top of his deck. Yep, he was able to find one off of the prize cards too, and we're going to see the rescue stretcher start to come into play here. Jimmy does have an option of shuffling them back into his deck, trying to grab them off of the sycamore here for himself, uh, or he can just grab one piece, uh, and it looks like he is going to shuffle in uh, the 2-1 line of the Garboder and just hope to draw into this. He does only have one bench space left, however, so Trubbish is going to be a pretty key draw for him to stay in the trash Lynch fight. Two minutes and 30 seconds remaining in this game. How many more turns will each of these players get, and will it be enough? I mean, it seems like we're entering the uh, the stage of the game where we're just going to be trading haymakers, but will that will they enter that stage of the game fast enough? It's a little over two minutes remaining. Seven cards drawn here for Jimmy. Yeah, if we had five minutes, I'd say that Mine's there's that rubbish, by the way. a lot of time, but... Yeah, two minutes is starting to get scary. Luckily for Jimmy, he was able to find that Trubbish. Keeps him alive here. But uh, Yeah, that was a big-time draw for, J for Jimmy. And also found another Rescue Stretcher, too. So he'll be able to pull the, the Trash Lanch Garboder out of the discard pile uh, and stay in the fight if he wants to. Uh, Under in the two minutes turns. remaining. Under two minutes remaining, Kyle. This is this is really getting intense. It's getting close, and uh, you can feel the tension as both of these players feel like they're still in it, but um, you have to believe that time's got to be on both of their minds. Field Blower gets rid of the Parallel City and uh, one of the, uh, I believe it was a it was choice, choice band. band. Yeah, a choice band from his... Drampa. Drampa. And um, now Jimmy Pendarvis potentially about to knock out the active, active Garboder here from Frank Diaz. A minute and 30 seconds remaining as Jimmy Pendarvis does knock out this Garboder. And now Frank Diaz uh, activate, promotes his um, his Garboder from the bench. And Jimmy Pendarvis is down to three prizes. Frank still has five remaining. Yeah, I don't know if they have enough time to be uh, moving around like this. Frank has to get going here. He needs to take a knockout this turn. Uh, and then he would also need to be able to take two Tapu Lele off of the board Under in consecutive turns. That means he needs to have Guzma Choice Band Energy uh, back to back. And that's very difficult to ask. Jimmy on the other side, uh, it looks like if he's able to continue with these Garbotoxin Garboders, uh, or with the Trash Lanch Garboders rather, he's going to be able to take these knockouts. So Jimmy in a more favorable spot, but uh, if Frank has to pick up the pace. It does seem that way. 30 seconds remaining now as uh, Frank is still contemplating his decision. Oh. Frank actually uh, retreats, brings up the Trash Lanch and Garboder. That's his only uh, potential Trash Lanch and Garboder in remaining. 
and Frank takes his prize, knocks out this uh, Garbota from Jimmy Pendarvis, and we've already seen that Jimmy's got pretty much everything he needs. Yep. 15 seconds remaining. Will Jimmy be able to end his turn before time is called? That's the real big question here. Jimmy contemplating his... Uh, his potential benched uh, Eevee, he does do so. He knocks out this Garboder, takes his prize. Will will Frank promote before time is called? It seems like he, he does did. so. It seems like Frank does promote before time is called. And that means that turn zero will be on Frank Diaz and not uh, not on Jimmy Pendarvis. And you oh, see... Oh, wow, that's big for Jimmy. Yeah. Just in the nick of time, he had two seconds there. That means that he has two turns now to find himself two prize cards. There's a Shaman EX sitting on the bench right there. That was crucial. Uh, honestly, that came down. I mean, you, saw, you saw the excitement out of uh, Jimmy as he kind of just uh, punched his own knuckles in a, you know, in joy almost. Yeah. Uh, very, very happy to, to know that he has the two turns remaining and, um, and not just one because Frank did promote his Pokemon two seconds or so before, or maybe even one second before time was called. Could not have been any closer. That was about as uh, close a finish as you can get there. And Frank Diaz still has four prizes remaining. He's not out of this game. He's not. But it looks much more difficult for Frank Diaz to get a, vi a victory than it does for Jimmy. Jimmy actually pretty much just has to uh, avoid getting unlucky here in order for him to win this match. All right. So Frank did not hit a Trubbish. He needed to hit a Trubbish last turn. Uh, when he saw his cards, he needed to continue to have uh, trash Lanch available to him if he wanted to score easy knockouts. This doesn't mean that he has no way of winning the game. Uh, the fact that he has Drampa available to him means that he can use uh, an energy and a choice band with a Guzma, take out a Tapu Lele, and as long as he isn't return knocked out, which technically uh, he isn't knocked out by a trash Lanch just yet, uh, Jimmy is one item short or one choice band away from being able to knock out a Drampa. Uh, that means that Frank would have another turn to then use a Guzma and take out the other Tapu Lele and win the game. Right, and Frank has to go for the win here, right? Like, you don't want to go for a draw. Oh, absolutely. There, there's yeah. no question you ha you have to promote, you have to go for that. Right, like, you can obviously go for the draw, knock out the, the Garboder, et cetera, hope, but that's not what Frank's trying to do. Frank isn't trying to earn a top 16 finish. Both of these players are uh, well aware that it's top eight or bust for them. So, yep. uh, Frank does retreat that Garboder, promotes that Drampa, passes the turn. And a yeah. Guzma brings up that Shaman. Handshake extended. Jimmy Pendarvis wins this game against Frank Diaz, and we believe he advances to the top eight of the Pokemon Trading Card Game World Championships.